Hey everyone, today we're going to talk about the A27M Chroma Cruise Tank. But before we do that, I'd like to set a target for this video. If we can reach the 80 likes within 24 hours, the next video will be online precisely two days after this video has been released. So if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe. Now let's get right into the video. The Cromwell was a British cruiser tank which was used during the Second World War by the British Army. It superseded the Crusader in 1944 and it was replaced by the A34 Comet later that same year. The Cromwells were ready early in 1944 but they stayed on British home soil for training. It first saw combat during the Battle of Normandy. They were extensively used in the 6th Airborne Division, the 7th Armored Division, the 11th Armored Division, the Guards Division and the 1st Polish Armored Division. They were also used by the 1st Czechoslovakian Independent Armour Brigade Group as part of the 1st Canadian Army. The aim with the Cromwell was to replace the Crusader cruiser tank, which in 1940 was considered to be a good tank but became quickly obsolete in terms of protection and firepower. In the Battle of Normandy, the Cromwell was struggling with the narrow lanes and hedgerows of the Normandy countryside. Hedgerow cutters were hastily welded to the beak of some tanks, but losses were generally high. In the Battle of villers bocage on June 30, 1944, an entire column was ambushed and wiped out by a few targets commanded by Michael Whitman of the 101st SS Heavy Panzer Battalion. Most of these 27 tanks were lost in less than 15 minutes. The majority of those were Cromwells. However, after August, the terrain once more favored mobility and speed and the Cromwells showed all of its qualities. Their career in the armed forces didn't just end in 1945. They went on to serve as late as the 1948 Arab Israeli War and the Korean Wars. This tank was used by the British, Israeli, Portuguese, and Greek armies. Of course, we are excluding captured usage. The Cromwell was one of the fastest tanks which served during the Second World War. One of the myths about the Cromwell is that it is the fastest tank of the Second World War. This, however, is false. The Cromwell had a 600 horsepower Rolls Royce Meteor engine and had an improved Chrissy suspension. The famous T-34 also had its type of suspension. This allowed it to have a greater cross-road country speed. Its top speed would sit at 64 km an hour. However, this was considered to be too uncomfortable for the crew, so they restricted its top speed to 51 km an hour. This was partly due to the fact that it was a relatively light vehicle. It weighed only 27.5 tons and had a horsepower to ton ratio of 21.4. There's even a known case in the Netherlands that three Cromwells jumped six meters through the air to leap over a canal when they were surprised by enemy forces. The Cromwell had a Merritt Brown Z5 gearbox, which offered differential steering without clutching or braking, a major advantage to previous designs, and it gave the Cromwell superb maneuverability. It had five forward gears and one backwards gear. It also had a superb operational reach. This reach would be 270 km if all components worked the way it was intended. The Cromwell was also considered to be a very reliable tank. It was actually slightly more reliable than the Sherman. This data shows that it compares favorably to the Sherman. It is based on the Royal Electrical and Mechanical Engineers data during the hard running of the post-Normandy pursuit chase. The Cromwell, like a previously stated, was a cruiser tank. This meant that it basically had the same role as cavalry back in the day. To explain it easily, it was to exploit the gaps within the enemy defenses by using their superior mobility. The idea behind it was that it was supposed to be reasonably well armored, packed with a powerful punch and it was quick so it could make the tactics work. What also was very important was that it was capable of being mass produced. The Cromwell saw it to be produced over 4000 times. The Cromwell was fitted with a QF75mm and could carry up to 64 rounds. This gun was a bit outdated for its time so it was forced to rely on its speed and maneuverability. And its secondary armaments were two 7.92mm best machine guns. Fun fact, the British and Americans could use the same rounds of their 75mm after the Royal Ordnance Factory modified their 6 pound design. This meant that it simplified the supply for the tank rounds. This meant that the high explosive performance increased, but the anti-tank rounds became more ineffective. This proved to be troublesome against heavier armored opponents like the King Tiger, the Tiger or the Panther. Even though the high explosive performance was now increased, it was believed that they needed a better high explosive rounds for close support. They came with the solution which became the 95mm howitzer which was issued to a good variety of tanks including the Cromwell. The Cromwell could house up to 5 crew members. Those members were the driver, Hull machine gunner, loader, gunner, and commander. 
After Operation Overlord, the tank received mixed reactions. On one hand, it was a very quick tank with a low profile and a reasonably thick front plate. This was 76 mm. I will have the armor values on screen right now, so if you want to have a better look, just make sure to pause the video. But on the other hand, because it was smaller, it meant that it was also more cramped, especially with a crew of 5 in there. Its length was about 6.3 meters, height almost 2.5 meters and width 2.9 meters. This tank was also sometimes used as a reconnaissance tank for which its height and mobility were well suited. Another complaint was that it wasn't very angled so it made its armor less effective. The signs for the Cromwell were submitted back in early 1941 and in early 1942 Rolls Royce was chosen to develop an engine since the Nuffield engine showed that it was outdated in power and reliability. However, development delays meant that the first model, the A24 Cavalier, then known as the Cromwell 1, was produced. It was built by Nuffield and rushed out with mostly Crusader components. The Cavalier was disappointing because of the superior weight of the armor, but was combined with the same engine as before. They also made a Cromwell 2, which was renamed as the Centaur. These tanks were mostly for training purposes. The main difference between these tanks could be hard to spot, but they had a different engine, slightly different size and the final Cromwell was a much more polished and efficient beast. The Cromwell also gave birth to the Comet which eventually led to the first main battle tank named the Centurion. There were also several tanks which used the Cromwell's chassis, drivetrain, engine, transmission and mechanical parts. These two tanks were the Challenger and the Charioteer, where the Challenger was fitted with a 17 pounder and the Charioteer with a 20 pounder. Anyway guys, this was it for today's video. If you guys enjoyed the video, please consider liking and subscribing. Like I said at the beginning of the video, 80 likes is a new video in two days. And other than that, have a very good day.